So I took a little bit of a break from YouTube, not out of choice. I did not want to take a break. If you saw my last video, then you know why. And if you haven't, then obviously this will be explaining why. But if you wanna hear the part one, I'll leave that video in the description down below. My name is Lisa Gabrielle, and I normally make videos on fashion and lifestyle. If you like that kind of content, then make sure to hit that subscribe button because I upload videos every Wednesday and I will be getting back to that schedule. So yes, let's get into the story. So. I think when I filmed my last video, it was the day before my first appointment with the orthopedic surgeon. So that appointment went long, it was super long because we got there and I saw the surgeon and he was like, yeah, your x-ray is not good. So he sent me for a CT scan and an x-ray. I'll insert the picture of my CT scan right here so you can see my beautiful break. With this, we were able to determine that it was a type two tibia plateau fracture, which basically means that a entire piece of the bone of like the upper tibia just kind of chipped off, as you can see. And uh, there was a depression, which basically just means that the bone sunk. And that's no bueno because obviously you need your bone to <laughs> be in the right place. So because of that, they were like, you need surgery ASAP. Not really what I wanted to hear, but I kind of reframed my perspective from, oh my God, I'm getting surgery to I'm getting fixed. I'm broken and I'm getting fixed. That was Thursday and they put me on the waiting list and they called me the day before. So on Monday, they called me and they were like, tomorrow at 6 a.m. you're getting surgery, woohoo. So I had to like run to get a COVID test because I needed a COVID test within 24 hours of my surgery and that was a whole ordeal. So the surgery itself was pretty seamless. It was more the after surgery we'll talk about. That was a bit of a nightmare. I arrived at the hospital at six in the morning and I think I went into surgery around nine. They gave me two options. They either said that I could get an epidural or be put under. And I decided to get an epidural because I had been put under for surgery before, but I had never done an epidural and I was curious. So the surgeon also initially told me that's the only option I had. So I kind of already mentally prepared for an epidural and so yeah, I got an epidural and they gave me some anti-anxiety medication and I was fully awake for the surgery. Mind you, I was high as a kite and I was very relaxed. <laughs> I remember before they put the blue tarp up to like block your vision, I remember them lifting up my leg after I got my epidural and I was like, huh, are they lifting my leg? Is that... Is that my leg? It was such a strange feeling. There was something about the idea of hearing people drill into my bone that was like a bit off-putting to me and so i had these noise canceling headphones and i was playing jazz and i was just like super chilled out i was so relaxed and so like high on the anti-anxieties that throughout the surgery i would take off my headphones and like listen because i was curious i just remember being like wow this is so cool they're operating on my leg right now like wow the surgery was about an hour and 45 minutes total, so that's kind of long, but they had a lot of stuff to fix. <laughs> After surgery, they took me to post-op. There, they were asking me like to move my feet, and I couldn't move my feet because obviously the epidural was still totally in effect. So that was really weird, like trying to like move your toes and just like, like nothing, like no movement at all. And then the nurses asked me if I was in any pain, and I was like, No, nah, no, nah, I'm fine. I, I've got a high pain threshold. I'm, I'm chilling. And they're like, okay, well, we're gonna give you this pain med anyway. It's called your exit pill, uh, cause you're gonna, you're gonna be in some pain. I had no idea what was coming up for me. <sighs> anyway, this is where they royally fucked up because when the epidural is still in effect, obviously you're not in any pain and you have to wait for the epidural to wear off before you can leave the hospital, which took for me about three to four hours. That's how long that that dose of morphine lasts. They gave me that pill way too soon. They should have saved it for when I was leaving the hospital. Anyway, I remember calling like my sister and my boyfriend and my parents. I was just talking to them about the procedure and they were like, wow, how are you this okay? And it was entirely because the epidural was still in effect. But once that wore off, the morphine also wore off and they were giving me fentanyl through an IV, but I'm a fast metabolizer. So they would give it to me and then five minutes later, I would be back in like a seven on 10 pain and they would give me another dose and then I'd go down to a four and then within five minutes, I'd be back to a seven on 10 pain. 
Anyway, it got to a point where they were so understaffed and they weren't they weren't really like tending to me. And I was like, you know what? I have the sensation back. I'm ready to just get the hell out of here. So I just remember like going seven, eight, nine. You know when you're just in like a lot of pain and you can't you can't deal? For me, when I'm in a really, really high amount of pain and people try and talk to me and ask me questions, I'm just like, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> so my boyfriend picked me up. He saw how much pain I was in and he just like didn't say a word. Just was like, we're almost at the car. We're almost there. Like just really chill and just on the mission to get me home. That car ride, you guys, holy shit completely redefined my understanding of what pain is. It was insane. I was in a 10 on 10 pain. I was like convulging. My body was like shaking around. Like I couldn't sit still and my hands were like literally like shivering. I had pins and needles in them. I couldn't breathe. I was like hyperventilating. I was obviously crying my eyes out. It felt like what I would imagine it would feel like to have your legs sawed off. Anyway, once we finally got to my boyfriend's place, and laid me on the bed. That helped a little bit, so I went down to a nine. And then he had to go to the pharmacy to get my pain meds because they only gave me my prescription like that day, which is stupid, but. So we went to go get it. And the problem with letting yourself get to a 10 on 10 pain is that it's a lot harder to curb that pain. So even though like an hour after getting home, he came back, I took the morphine, I could not get below a seven for like eight hours. So for eight hours, I was in like an eight on 10 pain. We found out this method of taking pain meds called pain cycling, where you basically say you ha you're prescribed like morphine and then like a Tylenol and you have Advil. So you take something every 90 minutes so that something's constantly cycling in your system. So we did that. We started that around like eight, I think. And then by midnight, I was able to get down below a six and get some sleep finally, fuck. In all of this, I also couldn't eat. So I had like half a saltine cracker every like two hours. <laughs> the next morning I felt exponentially better. The pain was way more manageable and I was able to get off of my pain meds after I think three or four days. And um, now I'm at a point where I'm in basically no pain, just a little bit of discomfort and stiffness because obviously I'm not using my leg. <laughs> in the surgery, by the way, they gave me a plate and three metal screws to just keep everything in place. So I've got this badass four inch scar on my knee. I already have been putting bio oil and vitamin E oil to help it uh, go away, but it's part of life. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So I'm really trying to stay positive here. The first week to two weeks, I was very dependent and I couldn't really get out of bed by myself. Um, but after a week or two ago, I started getting back to work work and God, it's been so nice. It's been so nice. Like every little bit of normalcy after something traumatic like this happens to you feels so good. Like it's just so much more appreciated. God, when I'm able to walk again, I'm going to be so happy. Oh my God. I'm going to like cry with joy when I can walk again. Currently, I am at five weeks post-op. My next appointment with my surgeon is next week and we're gonna start weight bearing. I'm hoping that I'll just keep making more and more improvements and get back to being active as soon as I possibly can. This was a totally crazy experience. It was my first break ever and it was a bad one. <laughs> um, but you know, in moments like these, it's really important to just appreciate the fact that it could have been a lot worse at the end of the day, this will be a full recovery and that's amazing. So I just need to focus on that, appreciate that, and appreciate the small improvements that I've been seeing every day. Let me know your most crazy injury story in the comments. We can start a little chat there. If you like me and you like fashion and lifestyle, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well because I'm going to be putting out videos every Wednesday, resuming as of now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.